It's my podcast. Change, change. Of course we're talking about change. Of course, why not? So, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth, too. Here's my podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, this is your host and founder, Andre Anderson, um, and I represent BSTL. Uh, what does BSTL stand for? It stands for Building Something That Lasts. So let me just start off here by saying this. Uh, Happy New Year. Today is January the 2nd, 2023. Uh, if you are listening to this podcast, this episode today, uh, then you know that you made it. And I promise you, you ought not take that for granted uh, because there's a lot of people that wish that they were on this side of the topsoil and in their right ma- mind and healthy enough to even tune in to this podcast. So I-, I hope that you're starting off the year with an attitude of gratitude. Now, we're going to continue highlighting some of the countries that are coming online. And so I just want to say a uh, welcome, uh, Durban. Uh, South Africa. Uh, I even wanted to go and check it out. I'd never heard of Durban before, right? So I'm learning about some of these new spaces that we are visiting virtually. And Durban just seems to be a really cool spot with great beaches. It seems to be a good uh, vacationing spot somewhere where you go to relax. And I would imagine uh, it is possible uh, that somebody is on a vacation saying to themselves, I just need to tune into BSTL. And so I just want to say thank you for locking in um, to us while you might be living there and or visiting there. Either way, we are now in South Africa. So anyways, um, today I want to talk about this topic to start the new year off. Um, I'm not necessarily one who does the whole, you know, New Year's resolution thing. I think it's hard. It's, I think it's important, not hard, important to, to try and develop and maintain uh, certain habits so that you don't have to keep waiting for the end of the calendar year. I think the longer you create some good habits, um, they stick with you and you just find a way to make things happen even when you don't feel like doing it. So um, this year, or at least for this ne- new season, uh, this is season two now, um, since we're starting a new year, uh, we're going to be just talking about some character building things around uh, leadership. And uh, I'll explain this first one. Uh, and this one I really wanted to start off um, a new year with and a new season with. Uh, this one we're going to title, uh, Can You Stand um, the Rain? Can You Stand the Rain? Now, let me just say this. Uh, probably... The greatest challenge that most leaders have to deal with is the ridicule uh, that they've got to go through. I mean, think about it. Once upon a time, uh, quote unquote, you were a nobody. And I don't mean that you were a nobody. I just mean that people may not have known you because you were kind of tucked away quietly. Uh, People didn't really realize the gifts that you had. And then all of a sudden, something woke you up, whether it's frustration Uh, a desire to do something new, change. Maybe somebody spoke something into your life and you listened to them. And now that you've listened to them, you're like, you know what? You're right. Um, I can, I can do something. I can, I can really do something substantial and I need to get my butt in gear. Uh, The reality is whatever it is that sets you off, whether it's been your trajectory, right? Maybe from a young child, you were like, I always wanted to be a leader of some sort. And now uh, the uh, the opportunity is upon you, something kind of triggered you. And, and here's the thing, um, whether it's been your trajectory or somebody has spoken it into your life or you feel as though you stumbled into something, and I don't believe that anybody stumbles into anything. I, I really do believe that there is a divine hand that is working uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and yes, you still got to get up and get some work done, you know, all of that. But the reality is, when you began to see yourself where you are and or are inching towards, um, there's some there's some gaps there. <laughs> and let me tell you what I mean when I say some gaps. Uh, you know, usually when we talk about leadership, we talk about leading, but we don't generally have the conversation around what is it that you've got to go through um, in order for you to get there, in order for you to get to where you need to be. And the reality is, and of course, um, today's uh, 
episode is entitled, Can You Stand the Rain? Uh, You can get to the room. Of course you can. You can sit in the chair with your pen. Oh, sorry, I'm dating myself now because I still use a pen. You know, your, your smart device, your phone, your laptop. You can be in the room and all of that. But not a lot of your educational process or your experiences until you become a leader prepare you for the type of ridicule that you will have to go through. So let me just start here. Um, I have always been um, a change leader, Uh, not because I want to be a change leader. I I really do believe that this is what I was created to do. Uh, I, I find a way, no matter what the space is that I go into, whether or not I've got all the tools, all of the resources or not, uh, I'm grateful to what God has already always done in my life. He has always given me uh, some insight to just get stuff done. Now, let me also say this, because uh, sometimes when we talk as leaders, we always make it look like it's really that easy. And if you would just, you know, buy the paperback book, everything would be fine. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is is that as a leader, I have always found a way to lead regardless of what's happening around me. And the reason why I start there in this conversation around can you stand the rain is that, yeah, it's one thing to be a leader, but then it's also another thing to be able to take the hits. Like one guy, um, a pastor, um, he said this once. I was listening to a sermon. I love um, listening to sermons, by the way. They have great stories, and you really get a sense of what people's lives look like. He said something that, to me, I've, I've kind of deposited it in my back pocket, and no matter what I'm thinking about or what I'm going through, um, I always go back to this quote. It's a great quote. He says this. He says that people will feed pigeons, but they shoot eagles out of the sky. And you know that that's true. Go to any major inner city, uh, go to a park, and you will see people with bread literally just sitting there basking in the glory of the pigeons. But then, you know, you go out to where the mountains are, to where these conservation um, areas are, and what you will see is there are people that are literally, like, taking their time out, vacationing, um, buying guns, however it is that they shoot these eagles, and they will literally sit there quietly in the cut and wait until they see one of nature's greatest gifts, the eagle, and they'll just shoot it down and stuff it and put it in their house, but they're going to keep those pigeons alive. And really, maybe for 2023, where I want us to start as we're talking about character building and uh, developing courage for this second season of our podcast, uh, I want to encourage some leader that is already thinking about giving up on their first week in 2023, I want to say to you, you've got to be able to let some things um, roll off your back. Uh, And I think that it's important, not that you ignore what people have to say, right? Because you will find that there are two different schools of individuals that will always show up. There will be the individuals that do intend well for you. And even though what they may say, it's a little bit abrasive and they may not always measure their words and they may not even know um, that you have um, a lot of sensitivity to you because you don't, you know, you don't show it that way when you're out there in public. But the reality is um, there are some people that really want you to do well, and some of the advice that they give you, it comes from a good place. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be um, sensitive at times. I'm just simply saying you've got to be able to determine who's saying what to you. Uh, the second kind of person that is there, um, they might have already figured you out, and they, they have come to realize that while you may be the one that's standing in front of that whiteboard or that smart, uh, smart board or whatever the case may be, they can see that at times your ankles are shaking. So they know that while you sound confident, you're a little bit scared, I mean scared. And the reality is they will say something to you in this new year, maybe even after you've listened to this podcast, you're going to look at your phone and it's going to ping and you're going to see that there's a message from somebody that you didn't expect. There's going to be a phone call, whatever the case may be, but you've got to learn how to take it in. Even if they don't mean well for you, you've got to find a way to process and filter even what your haters have to say, and you've got to find a way to push through. So, of course, the question then is, how do you push through? 
So here's the other part of the conversation, um, because one of the things I've discovered is that most of your greatest um, adversity, most of the challenges that you will experience in life, um, and these are things that I've read, and these are also things that I've experienced in my own life as a leader, uh, leader. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered is that when you are on the cusp of something great, you've got to expect that there's going to be some type of storm that is going to come your way. And the reality is you need those storms because why should you have a clear path um, to success without having to navigate and experience um, some difficult moments in your life so that you'll learn how to multitask? Like the reality is, you know, I listen to my kids sometimes and um, I don't know if I sounded like them when I was their age, but I do like to listen to them because the reality is I... Um, when I was their age, I used to just complain about stuff that wasn't really all that important. Like when I hear them say, Dad, we've got two tests this week, multiple choice or, you know, one word answer or whatever. I'm like, OK, great. Like, oh, how I wish um, where I am in life right now. I had two tests just in one week, uh, one word answers or, you know, just put your name on the top of the paper and the date and you should get a fairly, you know good score on that thing. Um, but the reality is, is that in order for you to lead well, and I'm talking about 2023 and beyond, because there's nothing we can do about last year, you're going to have to learn how to lead in the midst of adversity. And here's the thing, um, for some of us, depending on what our t uh, temperament is like, um, the adversity is important because it allows you to work on the skill set of focus. And here's what I mean when I say focus. Uh, yeah, it's easy to focus on your job when you get there because you don't necessarily always have the distractions. Or at least I hope you don't have too many uh, distractions, whether you are an entrepreneur or you're working for a large organization. It really doesn't matter. But you have to be able to refine um, how you pay attention to what it is um, that you are doing. Because the reality is, part of the reason why you have these storms that come in the midst of you uh, being on the cusp of something great is because if you don't learn how to manage adversity and the next level at the same time, then you're not really being prepared for what's coming after this. And can I just say this out loud? Well, of course I'm saying it out loud. It's on a podcast. You know, the reality is, is that wherever you are, you're not preparing for where you are. Uh, wherever you are, you're actually preparing for what is next. And if you're not able to deal with some of the obstacles that you're going through and, and will continue to go through, then you actually may be delaying what it is that is next because you're kind of stuck on what somebody had to say. And that's why it's important that you are able to make the distinction with, between who is for you and who is against you. Um, because when somebody is for you, they are saying something because they are actually seeing where you're going next versus where you are right now. So when they come and they have something to say that may not necessarily, um, you know, be the best in terms of how it presents, but they're saying it to you anyways, you've got to say to yourself, all right, cool, I hear you. I hear you saying I need to be on time or I need to be more organized or I need to anticipate uh, questions that may not necessarily have been a part of the presentation. Thank you so much. But then also to the person that's coming because they are a distraction. They are the static in your life. Those of us that are old enough uh, to have had those televisions where when cable went out for the evening, there was like this static that just emerged on the screen. You know what I'm talking about. Static has nothing to do with anything. It's just part of the interruption of the regularly scheduled program. When people come that kind of way, you've got to hear them out because in the midst of them perhaps trying to discourage you and or tear you down, um, they are saying something that you have to hear and process because number one, even if they don't like you, what they are saying, it may be true. Or number two, what they are saying, it may actually be um, a preamble 
to what other people may say in other spaces. And by you hearing them out, you may be able to filter the, the emotion and the, the feeling that you're going um, through in that moment so that you actually don't embarrass yourself in a, in, in, in a spot where there are many eyes and ears that are listening to see how do you respond to adversity. Now, let me tell you why that's important. When you are in the room, whatever that room is right now, it's always in preparation for another room. And remember, we, we, we're not generally talking about better or worse room. We're talking about responsibility. If you don't respond uh, accordingly to where you are going, there will be some people that may try their very best uh, to write you off because at the end of the day, here's the thing. If you experience adversity in a different room where there's more influence and more at stake, they want to know whether or not you're able to get into that space and represent those that you are leading in the midst of adversity. Now, the other thing is you also have to understand that you are the change that was not in the room initially. Now, this is this is the second part to this conversation. Because I already know that there's somebody that's listening and you're like, ah, why am I even here? You know, there's people that are smarter than me, with more experience than me, uh, more education than me, more finances. And for crying out loud, they've got a better presentation outfit than you. But the reality is you're not in the room for all of the reasons um, of what you don't have. You're actually in the room because there is something specifically different about you that you need to have um, uh, refined and developed um, so that by the time you get into that space, you represent not just yourself well, but all of the other people that are rooting for you. And maybe I should also say this. Here's what I've also discovered, and I think that a lot of us are guilty where this is concerned. And I mean, feel free to respond. Um, You know, I post these things on a bunch of platforms, but maybe LinkedIn is the best space um, to do it in, you, you've got to understand that whenever people are, are, are gunning for you, they're gunning for you because you have the ability to do things that they haven't even dreamt of. So you're the object lesson, especially for somebody that thinks that they've arrived, even though they're nowhere, they're nowhere on the radar. Um, you are the representation of, hey, that person, even though I didn't think that they could do it, Um, They're actually in the room now, and they're about to have a conversation with somebody that I've been dying to meet, but it's not me, it's them. Now, the other thing is, and I think that this is also true, and this is why you've got to find a way to let these things roll off your back, is that because you bring change, and you are able to implement change, and create change, and Um, deal with some of the nuances that come out of these changes, sometimes the opposition that you experience from individuals is that they realize that the longer you are in that room is the more likely that their voice is going to become insignificant. So let me also clear this up, right? Because, you know, as leaders, we're not using our positional um, influence. And um, I almost said power, but that's not what I mean. Uh, I I mean influence, right? Because when you are in the room, especially if you're not in the the top seat, you don't have any power. You might have some power to make somebody's life miserable um, day after day. But the reality is the great ones, the great leaders, they have learned how to foster and nurture the, the, the influence that they have. And so here's the thing, some of these individuals that are um, fighting against you and or trying to create an environment where you can't grow or you become so frustrated that you cease to function and operate, um, it's because they understand that if we continue to chisel away at this change that you have identified, that other people have also bought into, it may cause them to have to leave the organization one of these days. And really what I was saying before is we're not using that that measure of influence to get rid of people. No, I I, I don't agree with that. 
Um, because I, I, I do believe that even for the person that you have the most difficult time working with, there should be a way for you to work with them because some of them really need the employment, right? And we're not trying to get people out of the organization and fire everyone that is against us. No, absolutely not. We want to find a way to nurture them and help them to grow. And yes, every now and then, there is somebody that you're going to have to let go. But for a lot of your opposition, especially if they are one level beneath you in terms of um, leadership, they want you gone because they recognize that when this organization that you work for, if your ideas ultimately um, uh, develop and, and, and maintain some or develop some momentum, then the reality is they're going to have to leave. They're going to have to leave. Not because you're creating change to get rid of them, but if they're spending as much energy as they are to put shadows over you and cast darkness over you and your name, the reality is they are going to have to go. And so here's the thing. To those of you, those of us that are leaders that are really trying to make a difference, I mean, you're not just working where you are um, because you want to draw a paycheck but no you actually care you want to actually have a legacy that says that wherever i go i want to make sure that i am helping to make positive changes versus being uh, a part of the negativity that often looms over a lot of organizations because leaders have lost the courage to challenge their superiors for the things that need to happen you have to understand that scrutiny is a part of leading i have never in my whole entire life, I uh, met a leader that is not currently battling with somebody in the room that is more concerned with battling the leader than they are to listening to the changes that the leader is trying to develop. And maybe I should also say this as well. You have to also be careful that you're not fighting the opposition, uh, those that oppose you, to the point where you cease to function in what it is that you are supposed to be doing. If I was in church, I would say, can I get an amen on that one? You are going to be a part of scrutiny. You are going to be um, the subject of many conversations in the coffee room, uh, on, on the Wi-Fi drive on the way home, on the Bluetooth. You're, you're going to be a part of that. And, the, and you should almost see that as a compliment to some degree. And when I say compliment, nobody likes to be spoken of ill. But if they're talking about you, more than likely it, it, it is because you are doing something that is going to build something that's going to last. And really what I'm saying to you is, is that you've got to learn how to stand in the rain and thrive. Remember, rain, while it washes away things, it also prepares and tills the soil for whatever is going to be planted there in the next season that will bring forth life. As a leader, yes, I mean, I wish, oh, how I wish that we would have been able to develop the type of environment where people would just go with us on stuff. But at the end of the day, like, why? They don't have to go with you on anything. But you've got to make sure that the difference that you are making is as such that at the end of the day, you are making a better space, a better work environment, a better culture for those that will come behind you. Because remember, you're not just building for your generation. You're building on something that started somewhere else. And you're also building on something that is going to become a blessing to somebody who comes behind you. So there's this continuum that is a part of what we do as leaders. And if you can stand the rain and continue to plant things and continue to nurture things, and if you can, t can continue to allow things to roll off your back, I promise you, you're gonna have a better space even if you come out of some of these fights with some wounds and scars that may never heal, but for the sake of somebody else, I think it's worth it. And if it's not worth it, then don't bother. Get out of the rain as soon as you can, because it doesn't make sense to get wet and give up. You might as well have something to celebrate for when you get out of the rain, because that's what leaders do that make a difference. 
My name is Andre Anderson. Thanks for joining. Remember to subscribe and share and like this. And remember, BSTL is building something that lasts, which means some of what we're doing here, I may never see all of it 100 years from now, but somebody's going to grow based on these conversations. Take care. And remember, if you want to talk to me, BSTLinc21 at gmail.com. Take care until next time.